Good afternoon and welcome to BCIT Magazine. I'm Liz Craig. It's been eight months since the Stanley Cup riots, but as Aaron Mackay reports, the charges are still being laid and police continue to seek public assistance in finding culprits. Well, Dana, this is a day some movie theater owners have been waiting for. Michael Sharp from the Roxy in Victoria says these changes are fantastic. Rich Coleman, the minister responsible for alcohol regulation, says while liquor is allowed to be served, there will be restrictions. Well, as of Thursday morning, uh, RIM is reporting that the problems they've been dealing with since Monday have been fixed. Now, this is welcome news for BlackBerry users around the globe who've been complaining about delays in email, messaging, and restricted access to data. Now, the problem is said to have affected around 35 million people, or half of RIM's customer base. Now, that's a lot of disgruntled customers, something that RIM really doesn't need right now. Judge Malcolm McLean dismissed the application for a televised trial based on a number of reasons. He said there were safety concerns both for witnesses and for court personnel, and also still a lot of questions surrounding the technology, fears that images could be manipulated once they were released onto the internet. Nearly 2 billion people in Britain and around the world are expected to tune in to see Kate and William tie the knot. And if you're not one of the 2,000 lucky enough to have one of the coveted invitations, there's still plenty of fun ways to get in the spirit, like Kate Middleton masks. Grab your hockey stick and head down to the Richmond Oval on February 11th for Hockey Day in Canada. Big screens will be broadcasting all seven NHL teams in action, and there'll be plenty of opportunity for fans to test their hockey skills with hours of ice hockey, ball hockey, and street hockey. The event is free and runs 10.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. Well, thanks, Mark. Yes, Vancouver's second annual Hot Chocolate Festival is now underway, and it's a great way to get out and see some of the city's best chocolatiers. There's 15 participating shops collectively featuring over 50 different flavors between now and February 14th. So there'll be a lot of unique offerings, but here are my top three. Stringing Christmas lights is not something you'd normally see in spring, but for Larry Willett, it made perfect sense. She just loved doing it. It's just loved making everything glow. She is Larry's wife, Kim. The 47-year-old died suddenly this month, leaving behind a loving family and a void in her close-knit community. It's like a star is missing, it's something is missing, you know, you feel it. For me, the, as soon as I heard the news, it was like a light had gone out on the street. Larry felt the loss of light too. Oh, 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 oh. Ponderosa Crescent has been dazzling visitors each holiday season for the past 15 years. And, real. Yeah. <laughs> and behind it all was Kim Willett. Oh, she loved it. We'd go walk around the block when it was all done and look at everybody's lights and she just enjoyed it. So, in an attempt to return some light to the neighborhood, Larry decided to put his lights back up, even though it's March. And soon, grieving neighbors followed suit. And we just decided, well, hey, I think that's a great idea. And as soon as we found out, we all started putting lights up. And then, pretty soon, you can see the lights going on tree by tree by tree. Night after night, more lights are going on. And once again, Kim is behind. We're going to start off with the soap. So. I think it will fit nicely into the toe. They may not look like Santa's elves, but these women from the Beauty Night Society sure act like they are. We get a lot of hugs, and that's my favorite part when there's hugs, a lot of joy. <laughs> hugs and the joy are thanks to the 12 Days of Christmas campaign that will see 1,500 stockings delivered to women in need this holiday season. I think it helps people just feel normal and I think that's what all of us want in a lot of ways is just to feel really good and just be respected and treated with dignity and I think this is a great way to do that. Making this event a success involves the community coming together. So what we're doing is um, we have a local designer, Nancy Perot, who designs the stocking. High school students and community members decorate them. We have elementary school students um, also decorating and sewing. And then from there, community members come together and collect things, self-care items to fill those stockings with. So things like hotel soap, shampoos, uh, conditioners, etc. And we do 1,500 of them. And then during the 12 days, from December 12th to the 24th, we hand them out. 
and the stockings stuffed with necessities and feel-good items like jewelry and makeup are very well received. Um, thousands of miles away from my family and home, so I thought it was pretty nice. It left me with a really nice feeling because I don't um, care to put myself out there all around or go visiting or expecting gifts or things like that. So it was really nice to take one home when you're not expecting it. Thanks, it's a great place to be. Kim was so happy with her stocking that this year she's volunteering. Joining the ranks of volunteers responsible for everything from collecting items to storing the goods until the stockings are stuffed. My house gets transformed into a drop-off center, but it's a lot of fun sorting through everything, putting all the soaps together and all the moisturizers together, knowing that we can put one of each into the stockings later. Fantastic! Stockings! Yay! Oh, these are so cute! And with time running out before the big day, everyone's working hard to ensure all the stockings are hung by the chimney with care. Or at least, the next best thing. I'm Liz Craig in Vancouver for The Express. I'm Liz Craig and that's today's DCIT Magazine. Thanks for watching.